Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum Update Sunday, February 21st, 11 a.m. Mountain Time, 2021. The models are in, and there will be a reprieve from the cold in the final weeks of February, but March will roar in like a lion. The big story, over 14 million Texans are still without safe water as officials grapple with the crisis. Keep calm. It's boom time. And here we are at Power Outage US to check out Texas with just 31,000 customers out. They have the gold star. Mississippi struggling with 38,000 out and the, here you can still see the remnants of that powerful storm that moved across the US last week. Arkansas snow and cold bury records that have been standing for 100 years. Remember 2021 because we most likely will not see this type of cold and snow for decades. Ha! We'll see. Record-breaking snowstorm wreaks havoc on Utah. Toledo ties all-time record with 19 inches of snow on the ground at one time. Record daily snowfall recorded in parts of Memphis in the Mid-South as thousands of records were broken. Recent snow shatters more records as Little Rock receives six years' worth of annual snowfall in just a week. Austin breaks record for consecutive days of snow on the ground crushing the old records by two days. But relief from the winter's harsh weather is on the horizon. There will be a warm-up followed, well, by a cool-down. And homeowners have been hit with electric bills as high as $17,000 amid the winter storm. Is that even legal? Well, think about this. Texas was just seconds and minutes away from a months-long blackout, officials say. So they did what they had to do, or you would still be in the dark, according to the, well, the money funders. Snowfall analysis from the last 72 hours showing epic snow in the northeast or the northwest and Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus. Let's check out the models and work them through. Here's your Sunday, which will be a fun day in Iowa. Snow moving across the region into Wisconsin, southern Minnesota, and eventually into Michigan by Monday morning. Snow in the northwest. That system Monday will dip into the Northeast, bringing snow to central PA all the way down to Philly. Take a look at the lake effect trails up in upstate New York, already buried, and they will be getting, well, another foot of snow through Tuesday. That's their lose day. Take a look. More lake effect snow up in Canada. As heavy snow continues to pummel the mountains in the Northwest, Washington State, the big winner, are going to be picking up up to four feet of snow over the next few days through Wednesday. And then, and then, a small system moves into the four corners. And by the end of the month, we have some big weather patterns setting up. So stay tuned for more snow. Unusual seismic signals in the Sevier Desert, Utah, possibly related to the Black Rock Volcanic Field. Some rather large earthquakes have occurred in Utah uh, in the last few uh, months and over the last year. Sorry about that little interruption. Let's go back to the earthquakes in Utah on the 12th of September, 2018 and 14th of April, 2019. Shallow earthquakes, magnitude 4 and 4.1 respectively, struck a relatively aseismic area in south central Utah. They are now saying this is related to the Black Rock volcanic field and could be volcanic in nature. So big heads up there, Utah. We could be seeing some lava flowing on the surface. Now, a swarm of nearly 20 earthquakes has rattled Mount Rainier in Washington. And we've been reporting on this uptick for years. And this is a nice little cluster of 20 quakes. A swarm of nearly 20 earthquakes measuring up to 2.5 magnitude rattled Mount Rainier in Washington on Wednesday afternoon, according to the USGS. A five-hour series of earthquakes began at 3.13 p.m. at Mount Rainier. The USGS reported another sing singular quake struck Thursday morning. The 2.5 magnitude hit between zero and one kilometers. Now that means, well, I'm pretty sure you know what that means. That means that there is some lava or some type of activity at the summit. Let's see if we can get a better resolution picture of Mount Rainier seismicity. And there it is. Quite a bit of it going on right at the tippy top there. So keep a close eye on Rainier as we move forward. Seismic update, we had some activity in the Cascadia rupture zone as well with up to a 5.1 happening in Bandon, off, off the coast of Bandon, Oregon. 
uh, followed by subsequent aftershocks. We have an intercratonic quake here, 5.1 in Russia, and no other quakes of note except this one up here in Canada, 2.5 in Miramichi. Hmm, interesting stuff going on there. Waiting for a big earthquake to happen sometime this spring. Take a look. Will it be another Pompeii? Sicilians laugh off alarm over Mount Etna eruption. <laughs> well, there has been a fourth paroxysm, and it's spectacular. There's a picture to the right, and as we move over to the worldwide volcano news, Sakurajima exploded to 6,000 feet in the last 24 hours, po Popo to 21,000, Sangay to 20,000, Suonosima to 5,000, Kluchiskov back on the map with a new eruption on the northwestern flank. Interesting. Sabankaya as well, Suonosima, Manam to 20,000 feet, Pakaya to 10, Fuego to 14, Sangay to 22. This is just a 24-hour period. And Etna volcano, fourth lava fountaining eruption in five days comes at a remarkable same interval as the previous. And I'll go show you that in just a second. Well, what a Let's turn that off. Sorry about that. The fourth paroxysm within, with little more than four days is occurring at the time of this update. Starting the evening of the 20th of February 2021, the explosive activity at the new southeast crater gradually increased and developed into a sustained lava fountain now approximately 300 meters tall. That is 900 feet high. The last lava fountain back in this paroxysm was a quarter of a mile high. Think about what that would look like. And here we can see the ongoing fourth event. One, two, three, four. They're actually not at the same interval. These two were, this one seems to be at a longer interval and maybe it will continue to increase. But this is an ongoing event. This is not over. The fourth paroxysm with little more than four days is occurring. And we have very little information because we don't live in Sicily. <laughs> But the Earth is getting jiggy, and the KP index for the last 36 hours has been at geomagnetic instability. That's the yellow bars, just one step away from geomagnetic storm. And this is after we had a small filament just lift off of the sun. Another coronal hole coming in the next 48 hours with that filament. So stay tuned there. Now, some of the woke nonsense. I know this Columbia professor, but I think he's now lost his mind. He's claiming that he does heroin regularly for work and life and balance. And good morning. I think uh, all of us are feeling. Life and work balance he does heroin for. Now, heroin is an extremely addictive drug. Many of my friends have lost their lives. People I've known from this drug. And here is a Columbia professor saying he does heroin regularly. He, he can't wait for the weekend to do a couple of lines by the fireplace. This is the world we're living in. It's getting sicker. And you paying tens of thousands of dollars to send your children to these indoctrination factories. Now, Candace Owens, awesome human being, potentially running for president in the next four years. She, in fact, has <coughs> set up a GoFundMe page to fact check the fact checkers, and she has won her first case. And this is pretty amazing. Owens, a political author and commentator, challenged Facebook's left-leaning fact-checking partner, PolitiFact, over false ratings and won. Earlier this month, Owen announced she was suing the third-party fact-checkers used by social media platforms. She launched the case as she became tired of being censored, and she won. Owens' post was targeted by the fact-checkers because it correctly stated the fact that Joe Biden had not officially been declared the president, despite the media labeling him that way. Owen's video was posted on November 12th, and the video was hit with a false rating. And as noted by Owens, theoretically, every single person who shared the post was also banned or whatever. Now, she won. Isn't that crazy? PolitiFact originally labeled the video as false in our capacity as third-party fact-checkers for Facebook. On November 20th, an appeal to that decision was made on behalf of Mrs. Owens. PolitiFact approved the appeal on November 20th, determined that the correction was appropriate, and removed the false rating. Now, that doesn't matter because the election is over. But what matters is that these fact-checkers are complicit, well, in election fraud as well as six Capitol Police officers suspended and 35 under investigation after they were found to have left the rioters in by opening the door. That's not an insurrection or a riot. That's a tour. So, and all this coming out, uh, obviously, after the fact.
That's the way the media works. They tell you a lie, then they apologize for it eight, eight weeks later on the bottom of the page. Scientists now find a way to communicate with people who are asleep and dreaming. It's not some fancy wires that go into your head. They simply talk to the people. This is not news. People that are lucid dreaming, dreaming are half awake and you can speak with them. They can do math and answer questions. Not really that fantastic. Now the melting of large icebergs is fantastic and it is the key to drive ice ages. The more fresh water you input into the oceans that can shut down that thermohaline cycle, which includes the Gulf Stream and other currents. Well, that changes weather patterns and brings extreme cold to mid-latitudes. Read the article for more info. Great white shark-sized ancient fish discovered by accident from fossilized lung. And this is, we've been talking about the sealant camp now, now for weeks. <laughs> it's been in the news. This is another fit fish in that sealant camp. Uh, and this one was as big as a shark, a 66 million year old fossilized lung from a previously unknown species of an ancient fish as large as a great white shark has been uncovered in Morocco. I wouldn't want to be swimming in those oceans. Well, I do. 700 leagues beneath Titan's methane seas. Now, Mars has been bombarded by rovers and helicopters, but Titan, Titan is the one celestial object in our solar system that may and probably does harbor some pretty amazing types of life. And we may be going there in a few decades in a submarine underneath the methane seas. Absolutely fantastic. I'll be following this as we enter the magnetic <laughs> reversal and the Yes, well, the power grid fails, satellites fall to Earth. When Earth's magnetic field flipped 42,000 years ago, the climate changed as well. And we did a video over on magnetic reversal news on the Kari tree and the papers that are coming out based on that tree. A Kari tree 42,000 years ago was found to be that age that spanned the exact time of the Lachamp magnetic excursion. And the science is coming out. A link below to uh, the podcast will be provided. Stop putting your windshield wipers up in winter weather. Whenever I see people doing this, I'm like, ah, oh, if they only knew. Not only are windshields not supposed to be in this position, except for a short period of time, when you add snow and wind, they start to get bent. They destroy uh, some of the plastic servo mechanisms inside of the motor mount. They can even snap off and be broken. This is not what you want to do to save two seconds cleaning off your windshield. It's just not what you do. I'll tell you what you do do. You buy some crypto, but I didn't tell you to do that. But Max Kaiser and others are. They're issuing draw dropping Bitcoin price predictions. Long time Bitcoin bull Mac, Max Kaiser says Bitcoin could increase 4,000%. He also predicts dollar hyperinflation coming in response to the Fed's monetary policy of simply printing more money. So good times ahead. People underestimating the magnitude of the wave that's about to hit in Bitcoin and crypto says Beyonce CEO, and we should be listening to Chan Peng Zhao. He says the world is unprepared for the flood of interest that is set to enter the crypto market, and I concur. Zhao tells Bloomberg Radio that as more institutions like Tesla and MicroStrategy start to allocate to Bitcoin, the cryptocurrency will explode. Right now, I think only 11 companies have announced they are allocating some, like 1.5 billion at Tesla. Man, this just will not stop. But if only 1% of, let's say, 10% of the companies in the world trans translate their holdings to 1% in crypto, the price of Bitcoin could rise 1,000 times. That means that the current price, which is epic at 50, just about $58,000 per Bitcoin, would go up to $5.8 per Bitcoin, 5.8 million per Bitcoin. That's all I'm saying. Now it is Black History Month and I wanna share with you a story of Virtus Wellborn Hardiman, an African-American that was the victim of unethical secret US government radiation experiments in 1928. He's not the only one. And this is not the only instance when the US government does experiments on its own population. If you think they're coming to save you in a winter storm or they care about your power or food or your family, well, let me read to you this expose. 
Virtus Wellborn Hardiman was born on March 9, 1922 in Lyle Station, Indiana, known as one of the earliest Negro settlements in the United States. When Hardiman was five years old, he was one of nine children that took part in a terrifying medical experiment where he and other children were severely irradiated during a medical experiment conducted at the local county hospital. To get parental consent to the experiment was misrepresented and a new therapy for scalp fungus known as ringworm. The radiation of the skulls led to immediate symptoms, but also to severe progressive necrosis of the bone all throughout his life. Now he did live to a long age, but you can see what his head looked like. At the time, many human radiation experiments were conducted on African Americans and were funded by the United States Department of Defense and the United States Atomic Energy Commission. Experiments included feeding radioactive food to disabled children, inserting radium rods into school children's and injecting pregnant women and babies with radioactive chemicals. The studies were classified until 1986 and why we still think that the government cares about us. Well, no one knows about this. When the studies were released in a report entitled American Nuclear Guinea Pigs, the information was suppressed. Have you ever heard of that? No, but it does describe three decades of radiation experiments on the human population, the U.S. human population. The treatment on Hardiman's skull left him with progressive necrosis of the scalp throughout the rest of his life. The disfigurement of his head was so severe uh, that he always had to wear a hat. Hardiman faced intense criticism from friends who had no idea what he was hiding and for nearly 80 years kept his disfigurement secret from the public. Despite this obstacle, he graduated from Lincoln High School with honors in 1941. In 1945, Hardiman traveled to the West Coast in search for a job. After a year, he gained employment with the LA County General Hospital, where he was known as a loyal employee and was honored for his perfect attendance record. Hardiman died at age 85. The life of Virtus Hardiman is the subject of a documentary, Hole in the Head, A Life Revealed, released in 2011, that was written and produced by Wilbert Smith and directed by Brett Leonard. These types of experiments led to distrust of the medical community among African Americans and a distrust that lingers on today. A distrust that every American should hold, not just African Americans. Hope you got something out of video. Our government is evil. Don't believe another word. That's all you have to know. They're not there to help you. They're there to hurt you. Extract your wealth and make you a slave. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor and performance. And good morning. I think uh, all of us are feeling the... <laughs> when I keep getting interrupted. We love each and every one of you. Thanks to our one-time donors. The people that share this video are the real champions. And for that, we are forever grateful. Be safe. And that's a boom.